so I was just binge-watching old episodes of Ask the Mead Maker, like I do, and I noticed in about half of the episodes I say that this is a very special episode of Ask the Mead Maker, and I got to thinking, every episode is a very special episode because it's, it's time that we spend together, and, and I really cherish that, and I know all of you do. to Ask the Mead Maker, where I, Ricky the Mead Maker, answer your questions about mead making, mead drinking, mead brewing, and really any questions you're willing to send to me. This week is a very special episode, because we're finally, finally answering the question, how do we make our mead? It all starts, always starts, with a little bit of mashup. Let us begin, shall we? Here you'll see two hard-working meadery employees taking the inner liner of the drum of honey and attaching it to the outside of the drum. The reason for this is shrouded in history, but it is widely believed that it is to prevent the liner from ending up in your mead. They use duct tape to attach it to the outside of the tank, another industry secret, and a drum lifter to hoist the drum up so it can be poured into the tank. While Ricky the Mead Maker prides himself on his near Herculean strength, each one of those drums is 700 pounds, and he's not allowed to lift them, according to OSHA standards. Here is Eric, getting ready to pour the honey into the tank. Ha <laughs> ha! Careful, Eric. If you spill it, it's coming out of your paycheck. Just kidding. We don't pay you nearly enough to cover that honey. This is the first of several drums of honey of the day. By the time the day is over, they will have poured in almost a full metric ton of honey to make one batch of Valkyrie's Choice. Here's another drum of honey being poured by the boss. She really doesn't make enough to cover the loss of that honey. Careful, Kelly. What's this? Another drum of honey? That's right. You'll notice the difference between the first two drums of honey. One is a fall harvest and one is a spring harvest. We always blend across seasons to smooth out some of the varietal variations in our honey. Here's our mix tank. Boy, that looks dangerous. It is. We ask all of our employees not to fall in. Here we are pumping the must, which is the combination of honey and water from one tank to another. And then, after we pitch the yeast, we wait 24 hours until we see this glorious sight. That is the evidence of fermentation. It is the CO2 coming out of solution as that honey is turned into alcohol. After one month, we bottle. Bottling is pretty much the worst. We get about 10,000 bottles of mead per batch, which translates to a very, very, very long day of bottling. It takes between three and four staff members seven hours to do an entire batch of mead. Let's just watch them carry bottles and enjoy themselves, shall we? Boy, making mead is a lot of fun. Now, after another 24-hour rest period in the bottle, each one is labeled by this machine, hand-checked by a staff member, and, at long last, comes to you. Whoa, watch out there. This is how we make mead. Well, that is exactly... <clears throat> well, that is exactly how we brew our mead, give or take. Now all I need to do is send it over to Ricky with our word of the week. Ricky? Thank you, Ricky. This week's word is diacetyl, also pronounced diacetyl by some. It is a compound that occurs during some fermentations that you would know better as artificial butter. It's disgusting and intentionally added to some really lousy pumpkin beers. It doesn't tend to occur in mead, but if it ever does, rest assured, I will not sell it to you. 
Diacetyl is our word of the week and the end of our show. Keep sending your questions and I'll get to them as soon as possible. Cheers. <laughs>